Remember the 1970s? Did you like the 1970s with those beautiful haircuts, gorgeous jeans, ABBA being fashionable, politicians being disgraced, economic crisis and inflation? I'm asking you all those questions about the 1970s because, well, I wasn't born back then, but also because in the 20s, 20s decade, we might experience something very similar. And no, I'm not talking about the 1970s fashion that was, um, how to say that? Well, it was what it was. No, here I'm talking about stagflation, something that happened in the 1970s and something that might happen now in the 2020s decade. You probably heard somewhere in the news that stagflation was coming in the US and in Europe. And maybe you don't know exactly what stagflation means or where it comes from. Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. We're going to find out what is stagflation, what causes stagflation, and whether stagflation is going to happen to you in the coming years. Let's dive in. Before we get started, please hit the subscribe button down there and activate the notification bell to never miss a new video. Stagnation is the combination of two things in economics that we don't like very much. The first one is stagnation, which means that the economy is not growing very fast and there is a relatively high unemployment. And at the same time, there is a high rate of inflation, which means that everything is getting more and more expensive. Let's say, for example, that at a certain moment in time, we have an unemployment rate of around 11% and we have an inflation rate of around 9%. It is a situation of stagnation, economic stagnation and inflation happening at the same time. But wait a minute, not so fast. Let's talk about the last time stagflation took place, that is, in the 1970s. At the beginning of the 1970s, the Western countries had relatively high debts, and they were printing money to pay this debt. And printing money to pay off debt causes inflation, monetary inflation to be precise. And then came the two oil crises. Suddenly, the price of oil went through the roof. That made everything more expensive, and thus, Manufacturers of products were selling less, and as a result, they had to fire employees. And that was the cause of a spike in unemployment. That is the very simplified story of how, in the 1970s, stagnation and inflation came together to generate stagflation. And almost everybody was very surprised back then that such a thing, stagflation, could happen, because they thought back then that stagnation and inflation could not happen at the same time, that they were mutually exclusive. Because here's the logic that they had. They thought that if the economy was going very well, if unemployment was very low, well, that was a lot of demand for products and services. And then inflation happened because all of this demand was going to drive the prices up. On the other hand, if the economy was not doing good, unemployment would be high and that would be less demand for products and services since there are so many people who are unemployed and that would be drive the prices down of everything. So inflation could not happen because there was less demand for products and services. But the 1970s showed us that if some unfortunate events happen at the same time, stagflation can take place. But what about today? Why do people think that stagflation can happen right now? What could trigger stagflation today? Well, as you all know, in 2020, COVID happened and it created a lot of unemployment because of the lockdowns and all of that. To fight unemployment, governments all around the world, but especially Western governments, spent massive amounts of money. Because if they spent money to build a new bridge, for example, they would hire a lot of workers to do this new bridge and that would reduce automatically unemployment. But those Western governments didn't have that money. They decided to print that money and then spend it. And to make matters even worse, there were a lot of pressure on the supply chains. And this big monetary inflation, this big money printing, and those supply chain problems triggered inflation in 2021. If you want to know more about the inflation in 2021, check out that video. But it wasn't that bad, because in 2021, the economy was doing pretty good in most Western countries. Unemployment was low. But in February 2022, Russia invaded Ukraine. As a consequence of the war and the sanctions on Russia, the price of oil and food went up significantly. I also talk about it in this video. And yes, I know, it's a YouTuber technique 
to get more views on older videos. And you see, because of the war, the price of oil and food got up so much that it can cause an economic stagnation in Western countries. Let me give you a concrete example of how the price of oil and food going up can cause unemployment. The other day, I met a friend, and this friend owns a restaurant here in my city, and he mentioned to me that the price of everything that he buys, all the ingredients, was up significantly. And as a result, he had to increase the price on the menu. And since he increased the prices on his menu, there are less people coming to his restaurants. And as a result, he might have to fire one of his employees. So there you see, we're having inflation that started in 2021 and the war in Ukraine could cause unemployment in Western countries and put them together, we have stagflation. But now that you understood that, you might wonder, is stagflation really that bad? Stagflation is considered to be very insidious by economists for several reasons. The first one is that, as I said before, unemployment and inflation usually don't happen at the same time. But if they happen at the same time, it's very, very bad for the people who are unemployed. Imagine that. Imagine that you lose your job, you have little to no income, and in addition to that, everything gets more expensive. It would put you in a very, very uncomfortable situation. In normal times, if you have a job, a salary, and everything gets 10% more expensive, it's annoying, but it's not dramatic. But no income and everything gets more expensive, that's dramatic. The second reason why stagflation is so feared by economists is that there is no easy solution to stagflation. Let me explain. Normally, if there is, let's say, low unemployment but high inflation, the solution is pretty simple. The central bank, those are the guys who control the interest rate and the amount of money in the economy, they just increase the interest rate and they take out inflation completely. On the other hand, when the unemployment is high and the inflation is low, again, the solution is pretty straightforward. The government just spends a lot of money to stimulate the economy and that reduces the unemployment rate. But when there is stagflation happening, high unemployment and high inflation rate, no matter what the authorities do, is going to make the situation worse. If the government decides to spend a lot of money to combat unemployment, it's going to increase inflation even more and make the situation worse. But if the central bank decides to increase the interest rate to combat inflation, it's going to increase the unemployment rate and make the situation even worse. As you can see, it's a trap. No matter what the policymakers do, it's going to make the situation worse. So now you can see how difficult it is to get out of stagflation. But now you might wonder, how did he do to get out of stagflation in the 1970s? Well, let's see that. When stagflation started in the 1970s, they tried to control it by doing um, dumb things. First of all, to try to stop inflation, the government of the US and other Western countries decided to put price limits on oil, food, and other items. That didn't work very well. It created huge shortages and lots of unemployment because, for example, lots of petrol stations were closed down because they didn't have oil anymore and they had to fire all their employees. Then the governments decided to fight unemployment by spending a lot of money that they didn't have. So they printed that money and made inflation even worse. And the spiral of stagflation continued on and on with inflation feeding unemployment and unemployment feeding inflation. In most Western countries, both unemployment and inflation rate were above 10%, above two digits. Imagine that in one year, everything got 15% more expensive. Oil, your house, your food, your guitar, your hobbies, everything got 15% more expensive. The man who brought back order to this economic chaos was Paul Volcker, the inflation buster. He became president of the Federal Reserve, that is, the American Central Bank, and did the only thing he could do to stop stagflation, increasing the interest rate. And he didn't increase the interest rate just a little bit. He increased the interest rate so much to take the economy into a recession and stop inflation, and later take care of unemployment. It was extremely hard in the late 1970s and early 1980s. He put the interest rate at almost 20%. Imagine if you suddenly had to pay a 20% interest on your credit card, your student loan debt, your mortgage. It would be horrible. 
But that is what happened, and Paul Volcker could finally kill inflation, putting an end to the stagflation of the 1970s. The other Western countries adopted similar policies, and it was extremely difficult. This increase of the interest rate to almost 20% caused a massive amount of unemployment, a very, very big crisis. But stagflation was finally stopped. But what about now? Are we going to go through the same as in the 1970s with a 20% interest rate? Probably not. We are probably going to face a period of stagflation, but there is a high chance that it's going to be much shorter than in the 1970s. First of all, we have a much better understanding of stagflation, and we have the experience of the 1970s that will teach us what are the mistakes we should avoid, for example, freezing the price of oil or other items. And action is already being taken. You probably saw it in the news that the Federal Reserve, that is the American Central Bank, already increased the interest rates up to 2.5%. We are still very far away from the 20% of Paul Volcker, but you get the picture. Interest rates are going up. But that is a problem. Politicians really don't have any choice. They don't have any choice than increasing the interest rate of their country so much that it's going to take their country into a recession and thus avoiding a stagflation. But still, they will have to cause a recession. So sadly, a recession seems pretty much unavoidable. But hopefully, stagflation is going to be mainly avoided. And believe me, friends, a recession is much, much better than stagflation. That was it for this video about stagflation. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If that is the case, a little thumbs up is always appreciated. If you want to find out how Nike could dominate Adidas, check this video. And if you want to find out how Nicolas Cage lost $150 million, check out this other video. And as always, I will see you very soon.